What's going on, everyone? Welcome to part 11 of our Keyshot Essential series. My name's Kareem Merchant, and in this video, I'll be giving you a basic rundown of how to use your scenes to create dynamic, attention-grabbing animations in Keyshot. Incorporating animations in your workflow is a great way to create inspiring visuals that help stakeholders buy into your ideas. A simple exploded animation or turntable can many times help clarify design questions or give a more complete look at a project in motion. To get started creating and managing animations, we're going to need to open the animation workspace. The easiest way to get into the workspace is to toggle the animation button on the toolbar at the bottom. Once selected, the animation workspace will appear just above the toolbar. There are essentially four components that make up the animation workspace. Along the top are your animation controls. This is where you will find standard controls such as play, pause, skip to, and loop. It's also where you'll be able to toggle motion blur and output animation previews. On the left, you will also find the animation wizard and FPS dropdown. The FPS dropdown allows you to manually input FPS settings or select one from the list. And the animation wizard will be the main window to assign animations from. With the animation wizard open, you can see all the different animations and animation types that can be assigned in Keyshot. Aside from the animation controls, there is also an animation tree along the left-hand side. Initially, your animations will be assigned default titles, but can be changed by clicking a selected animation and enabling the input field. You can also toggle an animation's visibility on and off by selecting the checkbox to the immediate left of an animation's name. In the center of the workspace, you will find the animation timeline. As you apply animations to your cameras, parts, and models, their respective nodes will appear in this timeline. You can scrub through an animation by clicking and dragging along the top of the timeline, and you can also set your work area by either right-clicking the top of the timeline or by dragging the start and end markers to a desired position. Doing so will show a cross-hatched pattern in areas outside of the workspace. These areas will not be rendered or played. Something to note in this part of the workspace is that sometimes animations extend past the visible area. To adjust the visible timeline, use the zoom slider at the top right by either clicking and dragging or clicking each individual icon for minor adjustments. The last part of our workspace is the animation properties window on the right. After an animation has been assigned to the timeline, you can click on the animation and further adjust its properties in this window. These settings will change depending on the animation that's being applied. However, time settings controls will remain the same. Using the time settings allows you to numerically control your animation sequences. But if you prefer to do it visually, you can always drag animations around the timeline, as well as shorten or lengthen them by dragging either end of an animation's node. Just as a side note here, the workspace is currently open using the animation button on the toolbar at the bottom. This is my preferred way of working. However, the workspace can also be opened by using the dropdown on the ribbon at the top. By opening it this way, your overall workspace will look a little bit different. Animation properties should now be visible on the bottom left of the program window, and your library will be replaced with the geometry view. This is a convenient way to work if you prefer a bird's eye view of what's happening in Keyshot. With this window open, you can maneuver around your scene and view information such as physical light locations, camera locations, and fields of view. Workspace layout is largely based on preference, so don't be afraid to try a couple different layouts and see what works best for you. So now that we've covered navigating our animation workspace, let's talk about setting up a basic animation. Animations don't always need to be complex. Sometimes even a simple animation is enough to communicate an important feature or point of articulation. For this video, I've put together a very basic animation using our security camera model. Let's take a quick look at it and I'll break it down. I'm going to go ahead and select performance mode just to better show you what's going on. Essentially, my current animation begins with a zoom and orbit animation applied, which then transitions to an exploded view effect I created using a translate animation. It then finishes by completing another orbit animation, this time around the entire model. To start with, I begin by applying an orbit animation to my timeline. I did this by opening my animation wizard, selecting orbit, and hitting next. I then chose the camera I would like to animate, in this case camera 3, and once again select next. At this point, a new animation node will appear in the timeline below, and you'll be able to adjust properties inside the animation wizard. I typically do any major adjustments I know I'll need here in order to make life easier as I add more animations. 
In this case, you'll notice that my new orbit animation doesn't match my existing one. The rotation is occurring in the opposite direction I'm going for, and it's also rotating too far. The first thing I'm going to do to change this is open my node's properties and change my rotation number to a negative value. This allows me to reverse the animation's rotation. From this point, I can adjust the numerical value as well in order to assign the proper degree of rotation. In this instance, I've used negative 200 degrees because I've already determined the degree of rotation prior to this video. The same principles can be applied to all animation types, though some parameters will most likely appear different. The next thing I did was apply a zoom animation. Again, using the animation wizard, I selected zoom, assigned it to a camera, and it has populated my timeline. For the most part, this animation looks the same as my existing version, but it appears to begin a little too close to the subject. To adjust that, I'll open my node in the Animation Properties window and adjust my start focal length to a distance that I prefer. I can then do the same for my end focal length. At this point, the start of my animation looks nearly identical to the way it did before, the only difference being that I have not adjusted my motion ease settings. If you are not familiar with the term motion ease, it refers to the pattern of acceleration and deceleration that is occurring in your animation or video. Notice at the bottom of my animation properties, there is a motion ease dropdown. If I click on this dropdown, I get a few different easing options to choose from, and because linear is already selected at the top of the list, I get a preview of how that motion ease will appear. Linear means the effect will maintain a constant steady speed from start to finish. Ease in slowly accelerates into a constant speed, while ease out does the exact opposite and starts at a constant speed but decelerates gradually at the end. There is also an ease in and ease out option that combines the two effects, creating both acceleration and deceleration in the same animation. And finally, there is a custom motion ease option that will allow you to plot your ease on a curve using keyframes. I'm not going to go into this type of easing in this video, but if you're interested in custom motion easing, then definitely check out our Animation Advanced episode. Now that you understand the basics of applying camera animations, let's take a look at some part animations. The second part of my original animation sequence was a simple exploded view effect. To accomplish that, I began by applying a translate animation to the clear plastic cover on the front of the camera. You can assign these animations through the wizard just like the two previous animations, but in this case, I'm going to use the scene tree so that I can more efficiently locate the parts I'll be assigning animations to. So let's apply a translate animation. I'll locate my clear lens protector in my scene tree, right click, and select translation from the animation flyout menu. You can see that under the default settings, my lens is currently translating a distance of one across the Y axis. I want it to come out, not up, so I'll change the translate Y to 0 and change translate Z to 1. As you can see, my lens now travels in my desired direction. The reason I knew the Z axis would give me the desired effect was because I have my legend open at the bottom left of my real-time view. I just input my distance value into the axis that matched the desired direction. This legend can easily be accessed by hitting the hotkey Z. The next major piece of creating an exploded view is having the parts that will follow explode outward as well. You could individually assign animations to each exploding part, but I find it much simpler to copy and paste my already created animation. I typically explode my first part outward, then select the part directly behind it. Right click that part in the scene tree, go to the animation flyout, and choose paste animation. When I do this, a new translation animation will appear in the timeline with the exact same settings from the one I copied. I'll then continue this process for every part that makes up the exploded view. Then I'll individually adjust timing and distance for each. To adjust them, I'd go ahead and drag this new node to start a little bit after my first translation, and I'll change this new translation's distance to 1, so that it does not translate as far as the first part. I can then change my motion ease to make it seem more natural, and I end up with a familiar exploded view animation sequence. Now if you look through my original animation, you'll notice that after the parts explode outward, there is another rotation. For this one, I just added an orbit rotation and kept the default settings. At this point, you're just about ready to start creating some incredible animations of your very own, but I wanted to leave you with two convenient tips to help jumpstart your animation careers. The first is mirroring. My animation only has parts exploding outward, and typically, exploded views return to a pre-exploded state. 
Rather than creating new animations for a reversal of the explosion, simply shift-click to select all the parts you've exploded, and then right-click your selection to choose Mirror. Then drag the newly created nodes to your desired location. You now have a complete exploded view animation. The second tip is creating folders. Folders are a great way to organize animations and help make the animation timeline a little less overwhelming. Just shift-click a group of animations you'd like to keep together, then right-click the highlighted group in the animation tree and choose Add to Folder. This will now turn that group of animations into a single node. You can still access all the animations that make up that node by hitting the plus sign next to the folder's name in the animation tree. And you can also mirror and duplicate folders just like you would any individual animation node. And that's it for our Animation Basics video. There is plenty more you can do with Keyshot Animation, but for now, the tools you learned in this video should serve as a solid base to build your own captivating and dynamic visuals. If you really love animation or want to dive into some of the more complex aspects of it, don't forget to check out our Animation Advanced tutorial. As always, thanks for watching this episode of our Keyshot Essential series. In part 12, I'll be getting into Keyshot Viewer and showing you how to leverage the viewer for presentations and design reviews. Don't forget to let us know your thoughts on this tutorial in the comment section below, and if you found this video useful, give it a like and share with your friends.